Hi everybody. Well, here we go for another week of lessons. So if uh, if I've got everything figured out in terms of what your experience is, last week should have concluded whatever other courses you were taking, whatever other programs. Uh, if we were actually still at the college, you would now be spending your full eight hour day with me doing electrical theory. So that means that I'm going to be picking up the pace a little bit here, uh, providing you with some additional material uh, for the next three weeks. Uh, basically, it's going to be material for two weeks, and then that final week uh, will be one final test. So that's how this should play out. Um, but it means that for you and I, we're going to be pretty busy here for the next couple of weeks, quite a bit of material to get through. So at this point, uh, hopefully you're comfortable with calculating the circular mill area and talking about the cross-sectional area of a conductor so that we can carry on with the conversation about how much resistance that conductor offers um, based on its characteristics. So today's lesson, lesson 12, specific resistance. I say today's lesson, um, where the conversation goes from here, specific resistance. Let's go back and talk about where the conversation started, which said that there are four factors which influence how much resistance a conductor offers in a circuit. Cross-sectional area, point number one. That's why we spent so much time trying to understand how to calculate that. Next is the length, okay? So we're going to incorporate that into th these calculations. Um, but this lesson is more about the material, okay? So different types of material offer more or less conductivity or resistance. And then the fourth point here, just to finish this list, is temperature, and that's where we will go next. We're not ready for that quite yet. These factors are combined to create a standard measurement of resistance, which we call specific resistance. And this way, different conductors can be compared to each other in a meaningful way. So here's, a here's the thing. Basically, we talk about copper compared to aluminum. Those are our two primary conductors. And we've, we've talked about the fact that, I think we've talked about the fact that, the con that copper is a better conductor than aluminum. Okay, well, fine. That means that, that copper offers less resistance. Okay, aluminum offers more resistance, but we need to be able to quantify that. That's kind of the process, right? So that's where specific resistance comes in. And then the final point here says the unit of measurement for specific resistance is, now let's follow this through, ohms per mil foot at 20 degrees Celsius. Wow, that's a mouthful. Well, for starters, let's ignore the 20 degrees Celsius. All right, we're going to deal with temperature next. Okay, let's just leave that aside for right now. The unit of measurement for specific resistance is primarily ohms, because this is resistance, so what is the ohmic value? But ohms based on a particular condition, and that condition is mil foot, okay? Which means, here's our conductor, and it is, it is one mil in diameter, okay, which incidentally means it is one circular mill, right? Because one mill, um, if that's the diameter, then the circular mill area is diameter squared. One squared, still one. Okay, so whether we talk about a diameter of one mill or whether we talk about a circular mill area of one circular mill, okay, same deal. That is, that is the, the, the cross-sectional area of the conductor. And one foot long so that is the length of the conductor one foot now this is an incredibly tiny little conductor right one mil in diameter and one foot long you can't really build much of a circuit with a with a piece of wire that's only a foot long but these are the conditions at which we can we can specify the exact resistance of the conductor so that we can compare different conductors okay so here we are if we're talking about copper it has a specific resistance of 10.4 ohms per mil foot at 20 degrees Celsius. So if we if we control all of the variables, okay, the, the the diameter of the conductor, the length of the conductor, and the temperature of the conductor, okay, we we control all those, specify them as one mil in diameter, one foot long at 20 degrees. The resistance that that conductor would offer in the circuit is 10.4 ohms. Compare that to aluminum which has a specific resistance of 17 ohms. Now, these are two numbers that you're kind of going to have to remember 
you're going to be using them over and over and over again you'll you'll these numbers will sink in really quickly you won't have to try very hard to remember to remember them i promise so now that we know the specific resistance of the material okay these are basically the two that we're going to look at we'll look at some other numbers but our math is going to be done on these two conductors copper and aluminum now we can actually calculate the resistance of any given conductor so in order to do that we are going to need an equation so calculating the resistance of a wire using its specific resistance what's this equation going to look like so here's the formula and it is r equals kl over cm so r is the resistance of the conductor that's what we're trying to calculate how much resistance is being offered by this conductor in the circuit what is r R is the conductor's resistance, it equals K, what is K? K is the specific resistance of the conductor. So that's the number that we just looked at, 10.4 for copper or 17 ohms for aluminum, okay? Specific resistance of the conductor and multiply that by L. What is L? L is the length of the conductor. Remember in feet, it's all imperial, no metric involved here. Divided by CM, what is CM? Circular mill. Okay, so there's the equation. Now, what does this mean? So, well, I've mentioned this before. Um, so here is, uh, why is that not working? Sorry, bear with me for a second. Oh, I know why, I've got to do it over here. No, I don't. Sorry guys, technology is not working. That works fine, that's not what I want though. I want this. There it is. I don't know why that wasn't working before. Should be a resistor in here. There's a wire offers a particular amount of resistance. Okay. What happens when we increase the length of the conductor? Well, if we look at the equation, because to calculate R, L is in the numerator. Okay. When L gets bigger, R gets bigger. So you increase the length of the conductor, you increase the resistance of that conductor, which is like if we increase the length of the conductor, here we go, struggling again, sorry, what is there? We increase the length of the conductor, it has the effect of placing resistors in series, okay? On the other hand, what happens if we increase the circular mill area the girth the cross-sectional area of the conductor well now as cm because it's in the denominator side of the equation as cm gets bigger the value for r gets smaller so it has the effect of placing multiple resistors in parallel okay this is effectively what we're doing when we make the conductor fatter we offer more paths for the current to flow okay so there we are we've increased the circular mill area of the conductor we have placed multiple resistors in parallel and the result is increasing cm reduces the value of r the resistance of the conductor sorry that was messy but i think that kind of hopefully got us where we want to go with our understanding um now I need to get back to my pointer so that I can move on to the next slide. Whew, sorry guys, struggling with the technology here. Calculating the resistance. Here we go, we have an example. Let's put some numbers to this. So what the heck are we talking about? Well, this is a really realistic sort of scenario. We have a copper conductor. It's 14 gauge wire. Okay, we're going to keep everything at 20 degrees Celsius for now. We'll deal with that later. And it is 150 feet long. So how much resistance does this copper conductor offer in our circuit? Well, first of all, we would have to go to that table uh, that I showed you in the previous lesson. Um, for the most part, I will simply give you these numbers from the table, from, from the information that we can acquire. We can go to the table, we can find out the American wire gauge uh, for number 14 wire. It has a diameter of 0 0.0641 inches. 
okay, which means we can translate that to 64 mils, okay. Now remember, the equation that I just showed you says that when we talk about the, the girth or the cross-sectional area of the conductor, it's in circular mils, okay, not diameter. So we have a little bit of math to do before we can move on. First thing we need to know is that if this conductor has a diameter of 64 mils, what is its circular mill area? Well, 64 squared equals 4,096 circular mils. So that's the number that we need to use in our equation to calculate the resistance of this conductor. So here's the equation, 10.4 ohms per mil foot, right? That is the specific resistance of copper multiplied by 150 feet, that is the length of this particular conductor, divided by 4096 circular mil, that's the cross-sectional area we just calculated, and the result is the resistance of that conductor, that particular conductor, is 0.38 ohms. Let's try a second example. Now we have a copper conductor that is number 6 gauge, still at 20 degrees Celsius, and now this conductor is 550 feet long. Same process, first we have to find out the circular mill area. Now we can apply that to the equation, still 10.4, that's the specific resistance of copper, this is still a copper conductor we're looking at. This one is now 550 feet long, divided by the 26,000 and change circular mill that we calculated, and the result is the resistance of this conductor is 0.22 ohms. Now here's where I want you to start to recognize the whole point of this conversation. Look at the numbers we just calculated in our two examples. The first example, the conductor was only 150 feet long compared to this conductor, which is 550 feet long. So this conductor is much longer. But look at the resistance of this conductor is in fact less than the other one, despite the fact that it's so much longer. And the reason is it's so much bigger, okay? We had number 14 gauge wire in the first example. This is number six gauge wire. It's a much bigger wire, which means despite the fact that it's so much longer, it offers less resistance, all right? This is a really important point to see here because the whole point of this conversation, to give you an idea of our end goal, is that when we build a circuit, we need to make sure that we don't offer too much resistance in the conductor, right? Remember that work is being done at the resistor, okay? And so the resistor in the circuit, the load in the circuit, that's where we want the work to be done. Whatever that particular piece of electrical equipment is designed to do, we want it to do it, okay? If the conductor is offering resistance, there is work being done, there is power there, okay, in the form of what? Well, that is heat, all right, and that is an inefficiency in the circuit, it is a loss because the desired power is at the resistor, the electrical load, that's the outcome that we want, that's the reason we built the circuit, okay. The heat from the, from the wire, as the wire gets hot because it offers resistance, that's a loss in the circuit, and so we don't want that, okay? And so it's important for us to, to use wire that's big enough so that it offers little enough resistance that it doesn't get too hot, okay? Um, when you guys are at the plant, if you're doing service calls or, or you know, you've got a, an electrical problem and they're looking at you to fix it, okay, probably what you're gonna find somewhere is a burn-off. All right, what a burn-off is, is a weak point in the electrical circuit, okay, which is offering too much resistance, okay? Um, when you make your connections, when you're doing work, you have to be really careful about a few things. First of all, the connection has to be tight, because if it's loose, you don't have a good connection. And what happens is that, that that poor connection offers tons of resistance, and that's where your burn-off happens. The other thing that happens is that if you nick a wire, okay, imagine it's a stranded wire, and, and somewhere along the length of that wire, it gets damaged, okay? All kinds of reasons why that might happen. But imagine it's a stranded wire and 20% of the strands get broken as a result of that, that nick, okay? 
So now you have fewer strands in that conductor that's offering conductivity, okay? Your circular mill area of the functional conductor has been reduced. As a result, at that point, the conductor is going to offer more resistance, which means there's going to be more work done at that particular point, which means it's going to get hot. As it gets hot, more strands burn off, and you have less strands left, which offers more resistance, which creates more heat, and it becomes a runaway effect fairly quickly, and that's where your burn off occurs. All of the wires finally just, just melt, and you have a, a break in the wire. Okay, so that conversation is the reason that we're doing all of this work, okay, is to try to understand how much resistance the wire is offering, to understand how hot it's going to get, to figure out whether or not we need to upsize the wire for a particular application. All right, so that's, that's why we're doing all of this math. I'm clicking, oh, there we go. Example three, here we are. So now we have an aluminum conductor, okay? Number 18 gauge wire, okay? And it is a thousand feet long. So tell me about 18 gauge compared to the numbers we've looked at so far. We started the first example with 14 gauge, and then we upsized it all the way to six gauge, a very big wire. Now we've gone back to an 18 gauge wire. This is a pretty small wire. This is the size of wire that's often used in residential lighting. If you buy a floor lamp and it's got a cord that you plug into the wall, it's probably 18 gauge. It's not a very big wire, okay? It's probably copper, not aluminum. But let's look at the math on this. So first of all, circular mill of this 18 gauge wire okay is so we would have to go to the table to find out the, the, the diameter which turns out to be 40.3 mils we square it we get 16 24.09 circular mils put that information into our equation notice now that the Specific resistance is 17 ohms because we are talking about aluminum. Multiply that by 1,000 feet. That's the length of this conductor divided by what we calculated to be its circular mill area. And this particular conductor offers 10.46 ohms, which is way more than the other two numbers that we had calculated. Okay, so we are probably not ever going to want to use 1,000 feet of 18 gauge aluminum wire. It's just going to offer far too much resistance in our circuit. So that's the end of lesson 12. I am now going to put the next um, exercise sheet on Blackboard, and I will post this PowerPoint on Blackboard as well for you. And then we will return and do lesson 13.